today we're going to learn how to do wet pouring using a funnel into a container with an indicator line. Okay, this is the mat, this is the tray, this is the jug with the colored water, this is the container with the indicator line, and this is the funnel and the sponge. Watch me then I'll give you a turn to try. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> it's okay. You can try again. Okay, sorry. It's okay. I forgot the indicator. No problem. this back is that your bit idea tray okay so today you've learned to do wet pouring using a funnel you can take this whenever you want to okay would you like to return it to the shelf sure so if you see this activity is over here, mm -hmm. right? By the time I've come here, I've already finished all of these, right? You can see there are many more steps in this activity than there was here, correct? There was only one step, it was a short activity. Here there were about four steps. So their concentration is building. As we work through this, the concentration is building. He's now about four years old when he gets to doing this. Mm -hmm. So he's developed certain skills, he's developed the patience, he's developed the concentration level to be able to wait and follow those instructions. So that's why also things are structured the way they are. Because, and it's like that again in every shell, the shorter concentration span activities are at the beginning for the younger child. The bigger activities with bigger material are at the beginning. It gets smaller, it gets longer as the children get older. It gets more difficult as well. It's really, really very sensible uh, the way everything is planned in this classroom. It can't get more organized and more, you know, well thought out than this. Well, I'd say you give the simplest one, mm -hmm. but it was very uh, beginning and then like spooning, let's mm -hmm. say, and then uh, you just can't wait to start. How and old is your how child? You how old is your child? Um, it's two. Two? So for a two year old, they can wait a little bit, okay? 18 months, they can't wait yeah, so much. I mean, how, how did you manage? How did you tell them? Okay, so just, I know you really want to do it. Just wait, just let me finish. I'm almost done and then you can do it. So in the did beginning... You, did you start over or... No, no, no. I just continue. And then 
eventually in the beginning the first times you're doing it then they don't know the system yet but eventually the more and more you do it they'll understand that listen I have to finish watching this before for something like spooning it doesn't matter that much but as we go on you have to complete the cycle I can't let them take over the funnel activity they don't know how to wrap it up and stuff like that yeah with spooning it's pretty simple but with the others it's not so they will get into that in the very beginning they don't get suddenly why is she doing this why do I have to watch why do I have to wait bit by bit they'll fall into that yep. is it okay if your <coughs> child sits on my lap while I get straight mm. and then you get bored because sometimes you want to do it that way or my lap Mm, while you're doing it, it's difficult for you to do it, isn't it? Uh, no, because sometimes he will watch me very closely if I let him sit on my lap. Okay. As when he's I beside ask you? To, yeah, sit on sure, my side, okay. he won't be as focused okay. as when I let him sit on my Is it sure? sure. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For some activities, yeah. <laughs> for some you won't be able to do them. When you set up a new area, they're not going to listen to that inner teacher okay our goal is to we want children they don't listen to their inner teacher to begin with okay we want them to listen to that inner teacher and work from there uh, in the very first year that we started we've been doing this since 2005 but in 2008 or 9 or something like that we moved to doing it on to training only Montessori that was the year that this preschool changed from uh, Montessori Plus to full Montessori school. So we were doing a pure Montessori system. Now when we made that transition, we did not expose the prep children, the five to six year old children to Montessori because they had a certain amount of curriculum. I don't know what the full reasons were. That was the preschool's decision. But the other children were having Montessori experience. So I started training my students in August. We finished by about March or April and I did not have any enrollments for the next six weeks. So I had an empty classroom. My students have just graduated. So we thought, why don't we invite the prep children to come to this classroom and those fresh graduates will be the teachers. So they get to practice their skills. So they were very excited, the teachers. Wow, we've learned all this. We get to work with kids who are five years old. They're, they will be so advanced. We get to practice all those materials that are really difficult. And they were so excited to try out everything that they've learned. So these children would come, I think, three times a week or maybe every day but for a short amount of time because they still had their regular stuff to finish before going to grade one. So they came and these girls were just so sincere and earnest and can I teach you how to use this? Would you like to do this? Children didn't want to do anything. They were five, they were spooning, they were obsessed with those scales, they were taking the scales, they would argue over it, they would do this for two minutes, then go here for two minutes, then go somewhere. There was no concentration whatsoever, there was no real learning. And every day after they left the room, we would sit down and we'd discuss, okay, let's talk about today's experience. And they would say, oh, we don't know what you told us, it doesn't work, it's not really so, everything you said is not like this, and I kept telling them, relax just have faith and patience these children had never had freedom before okay they never had the freedom to choose what they wanted to do they were doing things in a more traditional way in a more conventional way now you've given them this they're curious they're excited they're exercising the boundaries of their freedom right so they're doing this and doing that one week went by the second week went by the third week was coming and they said, what is happening? It's not working. By the third week, these children got used to it. Okay? They realized that, okay, these things are there. I can really use them whenever I want. They became comfortable. That's when they started approaching the teachers and saying, I want to learn this. Then they did division. They did multiplication. They did advanced reading. They did science activities. That was when you could see there was order in this classroom and the children were doing serious learning. So even in your homes, this is what's going to happen. They're going to first act from curiosity because 
as you all say, you don't have this kind of setup at home. Suddenly you make this, it looks so interesting. So they'll do this and they'll do this and they're not going to want to take lessons from you to begin with. So let them get comfortable and used to this environment. And then you will see they will start doing things, listening to that teacher inside them, not from curiosity. That's what you're looking for. And then you'll be able to follow the child. So don't go home and set up and then think, oh my God, it's really not working. Everything she said at the workshop is just nonsense. <laughs> okay? it's, not, it's not like that. You have to, you know, I've done this job for so long and I still have to tell myself faith and patience. Two things. Have faith that the child will reveal himself through his work, that inner teacher will come up. Have the patience. I've worked with children, I have these, these two children, they would come every day to the Montessori classroom and they would go to the book corner and they would take open books and they would just giggle. They were not reading, they were not working, they were just sitting with each other and giggling. But they were not disturbing anybody either. So every day as the teachers, we would go and we'd say, let me teach you how to do this. Oh, this is really nice. Come and do this. This is amazing. You're going to love this. Come and do this. We tried everything. Nothing worked. One week, two weeks, every day. The entire Montessori time, just giggling. And I would think, what will I write in the reports? What will I tell the parents? What do I do? They're not covering anything. I have so many things to finish. How will I present it? You know, but you just keep telling yourself faith and patience. If I stopped them and I said, you can't do that, you have to come and do this, they might do it because they're scared of me or whatever, but where is their mind? They're waiting to finish with me and run back, isn't it? So then I didn't achieve anything. I made them do math with me, but their mind the whole time was in the book corner. When will she finish so I can go and sit with my friend and do the book corner? But they got over it. They exhausted themselves. They tried it. They were done. And then they moved on to something else. But you can't, you try. You don't give up trying, but you don't force and say you have to. I know um, in, when my sons were in school and one of them wants to, wanted to color the map. Every day he wants to come in the morning and color the map. But the teacher says, no, you have to do math. Come to math and I'll give you a sticker. He didn't really care for the sticker, but he was scared of the teacher. So he did it. By the time he finishes math, there's no time to color a map. So he was, he's not uh, an aggressive child, he's a passive child. So he would come home very quiet, one day, two days, three days. I said, what happened? I want to color the map and she never lets me color the map. I have to do math. So the whole time he did not get math out of it. Because his mind was not there, right? His ma mind was, let me finish and do my map. Neither did he get the map. So he comes home a very disappointed child. Mm -hmm. That's not what you want, right? You can turn, and I know I keep saying this all the time, but it's true. When you do the diploma with us, you can turn every activity into what you want. If he's doing the map, I can make it a language activity. I can make it a math activity. I can make everything happen with what my child, the interest is. That's how you learn to do things. So, you know, because you want them to enjoy the learning process. Do you get me? I can bring the maps into math. And if I've learned, this is what we mean about following the child. If I've learned that his interest lies in maps, then my job as a parent or a teacher is to make sure I bring maps into math. And that's what we learned to do. We had, I went for an observation to a school and there was this girl when I was observing. She kept walking around the classroom. Do you remember this game that came out uh, summer last year, Pokemon Go? Did you guys hear of it? And you have to look for Pokemon in every random place, right? She's in the classroom, she has no device naturally. But she's walking around the classroom saying, oh, I found one on you, on her hand. There's a Pokemon and she, the whole time I was there, she's doing Pokemon Go on her hand, okay? And so I spoke to the teachers after, I said, what's up? And they said, she does this every day. So I said, okay, let's follow the child. She likes Pokemon Go. We have to find, take her interest and link it to the environment. And we have to, Fine, so let's make math counters with Pokemon Go. Let's do a pho uh, phonics activity with these Pokemon Go characters. And then she will get interested in the material and forget about the other thing.